this whole closing in of the walls on doctors in terms of free speech, what they are and aren't allowed to say, that's actually happening, been happening for a long time before COVID. So COVID made it apparent to all of us. And what's happened is, I like the term, the illusion of consensus. So when COVID hit and, and these crazy policies started to be pushed out on the public, the public was given the impression that all doctors were on side with these policies. And that was far from true. Mary Ugolini here with Rebel News to feature an interview with Dr. Chris Melbourne from Nova Scotia, who is an experienced emergency room physician with decades of expertise under his belt. He was once the department head of emergency medicine for Nova Scotia Health Authority's Eastern Zone until he was accused of wrong speak for questioning COVID-19 related policies coming down from the provincial health officer, Dr. Stang. I, I think he's had a, a strong response from the community in Cape Breton. And uh, uh, my only other thing would say he's trained as an emergency physician. I'm trained as a public health physician. I don't try to practice emergency mes- uh, medicine. He shouldn't try to practice public health medicine. Dr. Milburn and his wife, psychiatrist and writer Julie Kerwin, are now hosting and organizing the second annual Free Speech in Medicine conference at the end of October. The three-day summit will run from October 27th to October 29th in Baddock, Nova Scotia, and will feature a wide array of speakers that will dive into topics around medicine and science, including the rise of the biomedical security state throughout the COVID narrative and seen through COVID policies, the legal role of regulatory colleges over free speech, among other explorations on hot topics like transgenderism and safe supply. Here is what Dr. Milburn had to say about the upcoming conference that will essentially serve to unite individuals who prioritize scientific integrity and discourse against political science subversion. Check it out. Sure. So my name is Chris Milburn. I'm um, born and raised Cape Bretoners. You'll hear by the twang in my voice. And I'm a family physician. My wife, Julie, is a psychiatrist. In 2019, I ran into some difficulties in the free speech realm when I wrote an op-ed that went a little too viral for its own good in the Chronicle Herald. Um, People can look into that a bit, but the long and short of it is I was dragged through the mud over about a year behind the scenes by a group of left-wing activists who wanted me kind of uh, to not be a physician anymore because I dared to speak out on some issues around personal responsibility. Um, that eventually did go away thanks to the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. And I was kind of cautioned by the college to sort of watch what I said from then on. So my response was, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to shut up. So we started this free speech and medicine um, initiative. Our, our first conference was last year. It was mainly about the mal response to COVID. Uh, for obvious reasons, COVID was on all our minds last year. Uh, this year is our second annual conference. The first one was a great success. We had Dr. Jay Bhattacharya and some other big names come and speak for us. This year we've moved on. We're mainly concentrating on uh, transgender issues are big folks at the conference this year for obvious reasons they're in everybody's mind. Um, drug policy, safe supply and harm reduction, those issues are big. We're also talking about the general issues around free speech for medical professionals and how colleges have kind of been very heavy handed in silencing doctors with views on, let's say, one side of the political spectrum. Why is it so important to house and hold a conference geared toward this topic? What we have seen in the last few years And let me say this whole closing in of the walls on doctors in terms of free speech, what they are and aren't allowed to say, that's actually happening, been happening for a long time before COVID. So COVID made it apparent to all of us. And what's happened is I like the term the illusion of consensus. So when COVID hit and, and these crazy policies started to be pushed out on the public, The public was given the impression that all doctors were on side with these policies, and that was far from true. There were a lot of people who had concerns who didn't agree with, say, vaccine mandates or lockdowns or mask policies. But we were threatened and told by our colleges, do not speak out. You must support public health. You have no choice. So we were kind of, many of us were threatened into silence. 
And what that does, it produces science is about debate. It's about refutation. You know, I, I have a theory that the earth is flat. Well, I think it's round. Let's argue about it. Let's get mad at each other. Let's discuss and debate. And then you eventually come up with the right answer, hopefully. Right. Um, if you can't say that the earth is round, then the earth stays flat as far as everybody's concerned. And that's what happened during COVID. And now we're seeing it happen with transgenderism, with drug policy, with approaches to obesity, all these things where there's one politically correct view that you're allowed to say. And if you say anything on the other side, you're going to get uh, your knuckles wrapped or worse, you'll lose your license. And again, what that does is produces an illusion of consensus around the, all these issues, which are actually very controversial and difficult. And unless we can speak about both sides of these, these issues, we're not going to come to the, the right, the true conclusion on them. So our initiative is about Speaking about the issues, our, our, our kind of our motto is if it's too controversial to talk about, we're definitely talking about it. Getting into the list of speakers that you have so far up on the website and anybody who wants to find it, it's freespeechinmedicine.com. How did you choose these particular speakers? And is there one keynote that you'd like to elaborate on a little bit further for our viewers, maybe as a teaser to this conference? Uh, we, we, we joke that if you haven't been canceled at least once, you're probably not worth listening to. So we definitely have all of our speakers are controversial people who've, you know, kind of face stare down the left wing mob. But we also wanted to get people who weren't just controversial, but had views that they could scientifically justify and had lots of experience. I'll quickly highlight two. One is Dr. Ken Zucker. He was the head of the Cam H um, gender dysphoria clinic for many years. And about eight or 10 years ago, he lost his position because he wasn't on board enough with this new thing about affirmation. You know, the first time that any 10 year old kid says that they're transgender, we're supposed to jump on board with that and support and support and support and push that ball, you know, push that snowball down the hill rather than maybe step back and have a reasonable conversation about it. And Dr. Zucker was not on board with this new model of affirmation. 100% affirmation. So he was canceled. So he's going to be coming to talk. And he has a, you know, years of experience in this. The other speaker that's worth mentioning, Dr. Julian Summers is an expert on drug policy and, and safe supply. And when people get to meet him, they'll realize he's an extremely compassionate guy. He's not, you'd not call him right wing or reactionary. He has decades of experience in this, but he, he realizes he calls safe supply. It, he calls it a marketing term. It's not a, a real scientific view on it. And he actually calls it public supply of addictive drugs. And is that really a solution to anything? He really doubts that. And he has lots of research evidence to back it up. So he's not just reactionary. He doesn't have a certain political view. He's just looking at the evidence rationally and coming up with a conclusion that many of us will end up agreeing with. And so we like that kind of person who's, um, they are not afraid to speak the truth, but they're also not just uh, starting with a conclusion and trying to find support for that. They, they are trying to step back and be rational scientists and, and come to their conclusion that way. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we won't be able to feature any part of this conference uh, online. So you've chosen that you will not be broadcasting this live won't be live streamed. Why did you make that choice? And how can Canadians who maybe can't get out to Nova Scotia uh, stay up to date or learn more either post pre or post conference? Yeah. So we, we felt number one, not many people want to sit in front of a computer for a whole weekend, right? It's a weekend long conference. Uh, and we are this old fashioned kind of conference where you come and you meet people and you look them in the eye and you can hug them and go to dinner with them. And, ask them difficult questions. And, and it's all about that in-person thing that we're not supposed to do anymore. The government does not like us getting together in person as we, as we have experienced in the last few years. So that's what we want to do. We felt that trying to live stream it and be attentive to people on a live stream was a distraction from the in-person. All that said, we know that a lot of people can't come. So we're, we're taping it and we plan to rebroadcast the talks as live stream, as not less live streams, but as online events at a later time, one by one, like sort of one a week, we'll do an hour talk and, and we'll have that presenter online to do a live Q and A 
uh, online. So that's that's our intention approach. So it should allow a lot of people who can't come in person to actually experience it to some extent later. Um, uh, you know, all that said, I think the uh, the chance to come in person and meet people like Gad Saad and Ken Zucker and Julian Summers and this amazing uh, group of speakers that we have, I think um, people won't regret it. I think it'll be worth the trip. We're, we're not purposely setting out to be controversial. That's not our goal. Our goal is to be truthful. Um, sadly, in 2023, there's not much distinction between those two things. So I think being truthful is being controversial. Uh, in so many areas of society right now, we're being pushed to accept lies. You know, uh, there's no difference between men and women. Uh, a boy can change into a girl. Um, giving people free fentanyl is going to make our communities better. All these things, we we all feel their lies and we're supposed to just accept them. And our goal as free speech and medicine is to say no. Let's let's be truthful. Let's talk truthfully. Let's talk openly. We may all disagree in the end, but at least we can get our views out there and see what we come up with. Upholding free speech and your access to it is exactly why Rebel News has partnered with VPN provider Private Internet Access. In response to ridiculous legislation put forward by the Justin Trudeau Liberals, all major social media platforms are preemptively blocking Canadian news sites, including ours. To ensure that you can continue to access all of our content across a broad range of platforms while also maintaining your privacy. Head over to PIAVPN.com slash Rebel News and take advantage of hefty savings of 83% off of a yearly plan. Don't get left behind. Visit PIAVPN.com slash Rebel News and protect your access to the news.